Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here is here once again. Now it's time for part four of my vinyl collection as of uh, 2016. Uh, this series of videos that I've had pretty much ongoing throughout this summer as well as some of the reviews I've been doing. Uh, and uh, we'll be able to continue a little bit uh, once uh, the school year starts, which is, you know, in about a week or so. So, yeah, um, I'm just going to get right into it, shall we? Um, and before we get into, like, some of the L's here, uh, I want to show you, uh, a new vinyl that I just recently added to my collection. Uh, it's a pretty new one. Got it at Kachunk in, uh, Annapolis, Maryland, my local record store, and pretty excited to have this one. One of my favorite albums of the year. Death Grips. Bottomless Pit. Man. This album is a lot of fun to listen to. Yeah, it's, uh, just really good, just intense, visceral, just, you know, very kind of punky, you know, uh, you know, uh, sort of, you know, uh, hip-hop, punk, sort of hardcore bangers right here. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, this album came out in May, but, uh, this is the vinyl, it, like, the vinyl of this didn't come out until, uh, just now, in late July, and, Really cool artwork on this, and let me show you the inside of this. Uh, yeah, I remember, you may remember I reviewed this record, um, like, uh, this year. Uh, just a, a really good album. And uh, here's the lyrics on here, and like the liner notes, and stuff like that. And, um, let me show you the vinyl that's in here. There's side A and uh, side B, in which I'm sure that's what a bottomless pit looks like. Whoa. Huh. Yeah, this is like my first, like, the first time I've actually owned a physical copy of one of Death Grips' albums. I'm pretty happy about it. And it's got a little download card in here. But yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite hip, not just one of my favorite like hip hop albums of the year, but also one of my favorite albums of the year, period. I mean, I gave this one a pretty high score, which, you know, makes sense because this album just, you know, blew my mind. It, it, it's so good. Listen to it. Yeah. Next one, uh, now we're getting to the L's here. Um, yeah, yeah, Death Grips would be going into the D's after I film this video, but anyway. Another one of my favorite LPs from this year, one of the most surprising albums, I think, that came out this year that I recently bought on vinyl. Rail of Montaigne, Aura Burroughs. Yeah, um, of course, you know, Ray definitely went in a different direction with this album. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, for the Death Grips album, you know, I did play it. It definitely plays really well. It sounds great on vinyl because the production's so well done on that record. Um, anyway, Ray definitely went in a different direction with his folky singer-songwriter kind of style and hired Jim James of My Morning Jacket to do some production on this. And surprisingly, the two work together really well on this album. You know, I've really only been, like, a casual fan of his before this record. Like, uh, you know, really the only full-length record of his that I loved all the way through was Till the Sun Turns Black. But, uh, yeah, this record is fantastic. You know, uh, and it plays really nicely on vinyl. Sounds really gorgeous on vinyl, um, actually. And it's a two-parter. Uh, you know, part one is kind of sort of, you know, space rock and you know, kind of, you know, sort of more kind of, uh, sort of the upbeat side of things. But then you get the second half, which is really more brooding and slower, but, you know, really beautiful. So, yeah, the concept behind this record, I think, was pretty cool. Um, cool. And, uh, I applaud Ray, of course, for moving in this direction. And also, look at that artwork in there. It's really, really gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, I can't really think of many moments on this record that I really hated or anything like that. It's a pretty solid album. And here are the lyrics on there. It's like a poster. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, the artwork looks so much better on vinyl, and plus the album itself definitely sounds really good on vinyl, too. And, uh, part one and part two. You know, there are eight songs on this, but, uh, it's essentially just two 20-minute long, you know, sort of, you know, pieces on here, you know. Yeah. No download cards in there. Got this one at Barnes & Noble. Uh, since they sell quite a bit of vinyl these days, actually, you know, based on the one I've been to. <clears throat> yep, so, yeah, that's, uh, you know, the vinyl copy of Ouroboros, the new Real Montaigne record. You know, definitely give that one a listen if you can. Even if you don't like Ray, like if you, uh, if you like like some, like you know, if you want some a good like sort of psychedelic space rock folk singer songwriter sort of, you know, mashup on a record, well then you know I think you'll like that album. Um, I do have both Local Natives records, uh, Gorilla Manor and Hummingbird, uh, but uh, I don't think I'll show those because um you know uh. Uh, to be honest, you know, uh, don't don't really care that much for local natives anymore. You know, as I've matured and my taste has got, I've just wanted a little more out of music. Local natives are kind of, you know, way down here. You know, while some of the other bands I'm interested in are kind of way up here in terms of innovativeness. Yeah, yeah. Just making sure these are organized right. Right, they look good. Yeah, and so yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're good now, so let's move on to some more vinyl here. Um, um, this is one that, uh, it's, you know, this musician from Ireland sent me. His name is Stevie Scullion. You know, he's on a moniker called Melogian, and he did send me this. Uh, a vinyl copy of the debut album from Melog Melogian, The Deer's Cry. Pretty good, kind of soft, acoustic, kind of music right here. You know, I like told him in a letter that I wrote that like uh, to him that like he kind of reminds me of Iron and Wine a little bit. Yeah, in terms of his style a little bit. But yeah, it's pretty good stuff going on here and really nice artwork here. Uh, you know, it looks really nice. And yeah, like there's the liner notes underneath it. And something cool about the vinyl, this is, oh, yeah, this is on clear vinyl. Isn't that cool? Side A and, uh, here's side B. Yeah, yeah, I didn't notice that this was on a clear vinyl. I think that's, I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is kind of independent vinyl that a lot of you guys may not know about. And uh, this is a test pressing vinyl that the folk, the really kind folks at ATO Records sent me this. Um, this is uh, Rhett Miller's recent solo record, The Traveler. Yeah, yeah, of course, this is a test pressing of that. Haven't really listened to this yet, but uh, I'll have to check it out. Or side A and Side B. I like to thank the I, I'd like to thank the folks at ATO Records for sending me this and for all your gracious support that you have given me, you know. 
do a few of the reviews I've given of a few of the records on your label. Uh, well, I do, well, one thing I do know about this album is that Rhett Miller actually recorded this at a legendary studio in Portland, Oregon called Jackpot, where several indie artists that I really like have recorded. Uh, and he recorded it with the uh, the 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 guys from uh, the uh, the band Black Prairie. Like Chris Funk actually produces this. You know some of the same people that are in the Decemberists too. Uh, you know that 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 played on here. It's pretty much everyone in the Decemberists minus Colin Malloy. Pretty much you know who I think would work much better for Rhett Miller, uh, especially in you know in the you know this day and age. Pretty much, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to listen to this sometime. Yeah, and I have a couple of Modest Mouse records on uh, vinyl, of course. Uh, show them to you. Uh, of course, I got The Lonesome Crowded West. You may remember I reviewed this record. Really, just a, just a classic, just, you know, you know, landmark indie record right here. Um, of course, this is the first half of it, which, uh, one difference between the vinyl and the CD is that the song, is that the vinyl contains the song Baby Blue Sedan on it, and, uh, you know, the CD doesn't. And also, uh, Lounge Closing Time is, uh, you know, actually pretty, uh, you know, later in the track listing, actually track 15, so that's what makes the vinyl of Lonesome and Crowded West different. And it sounds really, really good on vinyl. There are some of the lyrics, and of course, some of the liner notes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people would say this is Modest Mouse's best record. Me, personally, I think I, I, I think The Moon in Antarctica is my favorite, mostly because I think, I do really like this record. Definitely, I definitely, I gave it a 10 out of 10 in the description, but, uh, you know, uh, in terms of, like, the production and how crisp everything is, you know, uh, Moon in Antarctica is objectively better because this record is pretty lo-fi and raw and stuff like that, and, you know, objectively, it may not necessarily be produced all that well, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, but, you know, I, I don't mean that in a bad way, just, uh, you know, this is, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, the Moon in Antarctica in terms of the kind of, you know, in terms of like, you know, the, the recording quality and stuff like that, you know, is kind of objectively better a little bit. Um, anyway, uh, side, there's side A, and there's side B. Love Isaac Brock's lyrics on here. Isaac is such a witty, just clever, and, you know, he's just so full of wordplay that it's, He's, he's just so full of wordplay to the point where it's annoying, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so I really like kind of his lyrics that kind of, you know, are very critical of sort of, you know, commercialized society on here. And there's like a download card here. At least on his own label, Glacial Pace. Yeah. And the, and I do know one fact about Glacial Pace. It used to be like a subsidiary of Epic Records where the band was signed since like 2000 or something like that and uh you know the so like used to be a major label and the first artist that was signed to the label was mason jennings which i reviewed a couple of his records before and uh also um uh but but then eventually it got turned into an independent label and now kind of releases some reissues of the the modest some of these modest mouse lps yeah, and um, next, uh, there's the second half of Lonesome Crowded West. So yeah, basically, uh, like in a uh, documentary on um, uh, this record, uh, Isaac said that it was kind of, you know, the record was kind of dealing with kind of you know, the, the stuff that was bothering him about shopping malls and, like, the, the, the paving of the West, he calls it. Mm. Mm. 
Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's the lyrics for the second half of the LP. And uh, yeah, yeah, some more liner notes there. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, produced by Calvin Johnson uh, in, with Isaac and Scott Sweezy, you know, of course. Uh, and, and a couple of the songs were recorded out of Vast uh, with, uh, like, Phil Eck, you know, rec recording that. Which, uh, you know, he's recorded several great, in, like, indie artists, pretty much. And, um, and there's Side C and Side A. Mm. 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 All right, and you may remember I reviewed this one too. Um, uh, their breakout record, "Good News for People of Bad News." Um, not their best record. Um, I, I still really, I still think this record. I still like this album. I still think it's good and stuff like that. Um, but, um, you know, I feel that it's maybe a little bit of a mixed bag. I mean, there's some tracks on here that I really like. Others kind of feel like filler moments for me. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a good album. I'll, I'll tell you that. You know, you know, don't know why so many, like, older fans uh, over this record were like, where's the raw energy? Or... You know, where's the longer songs or something like that? Not sure why so many people were like that. You know, because that's because still there is a lot to like about this record. Um, I don't know why so many people just you know, so some fans you know just kind of you know fell off the bandwagon uh, around the time of this record. You know, like same thing with Def Cab for Cutie. I thought that was a little unnecessary considering Plants is actually a pretty solid record, in my opinion. I did review that record. Um, anyway, here's the lyrics and uh, like a gas mask. And it's on really nice, like really bright pink vinyl. Uh, uh, not, not like on the outside, but like the label is really bright pink. Yep. Yeah, yeah, of course, everybody knows this is the album with Float On and Ocean Brief Salty on it, but uh, really some of the deep cuts on this record are great. I know World at Large isn't necessarily a deep cut, but it's a little more underrated than Float On. Uh, but, but yeah, great song and Good Times Are Killing Me uh, and Devil, Devil's Work Day, which, uh, you know, really uh, has kind of a Tom Waits sort of you know, ask instrumental and vocal performance going on. It's not like, you know, as gruff as him, but, but Isaac definitely goes nuts on that track vocally. Yeah, I just love that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let me put this back in here. No gatefold, unfortunately, which, you know, kind of sucks, because, uh, you know, I, I, I love, because I really like those gatefolds. I think they're really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, also in my collection, I do have, I have one Muse record on vinyl, uh, Showbiz, their debut album. Um, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I, I used to be kind of, I used to like Muse a little more than I, I, I do now. I mean, you know, Muse can be a little hit or miss for me. I mean, this album's definitely got some good songs on it, and I still really, I still really like Origin of Symmetry. I still think it's a great album, but, um, for whatever reason, they feel the need to be all bombastic and over the top and campy. All the time, you know, uh, you know, n not necessarily like if you look at their older stuff, that's not really the case, but uh, I think they've kind of gone downhill since the resistance a little bit. Yep.
like a photo of the band there. And, uh, and then uh, here's like the first paper in here. And uh, then there's side uh, A and side B. And uh, then there's other paper, the rest of the credits on there. And then there's side C and uh, side D. Two vinyls in here. Like, uh, Like, uh, Lonesome Crowded West, I got at a record store that used to be in uh, Hanover uh, called Off the Record. That's pretty much closed at this point. Uh, this uh, showbiz vinyl I got at a store called uh, Tracks on Wax uh, in uh, Catonsville, Maryland. Yep, and uh, and uh, next, uh, this is one that I got sent to me when I like met uh, Casey Musgraves a couple of years ago and her band, and of course uh, Mesa Rigia and, and those people like that. It's a signed copy of Casey Musgraves, same trailer, different part, you know. Uh, a bit of a modern uh, country album here. I haven't really listened to this yet, and uh, she's act and for modern country artists, you know, she's actually not too bad. You know, uh, a lot of people have said she's actually pretty good. Although I haven't really listened to this. Um, here's side one. Uh, aka side one, and then there's side B. Yeah, no download card in here. Yeah, it seems uh, a lot of the albums on major labels don't come with download cards for whatever reason. I think it's kind of strange. Well, not that I not that I need the download cards or anything like that. Just saying. And, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, this, uh, next vinyl that I have is a pretty big vinyl, so I'll wait till, uh, part five to do that. So I'll stop there for part four. See you guys for part five of my vinyl collection as of 2016.